Hey guys, Scare9 here, and welcome back to my channel today. And while I am not able to play the beta just yet because I'm on Xbox, I can bring you guys all of the latest Destiny 2 information. So in this video, we're going to be breaking down the Voidwalker skill tree. Now, you guys know I love to credit my sources down in the video description, but I'm not really sure who to credit for this one. There's a lot of different posts on the Destiny subreddit covering this, so I'm going to go ahead and link one of them down in the description below, but there's a ton of them, so uh, go check those out if you are interested. But for this video, I do want to just take a second and take a look at the entire Voidwalker skill tree. Now, we have seen a little bit of gameplay of the Voidwalker thanks to IGN and some of their first look coverage. However, this subclass tree makes it seem a lot better than I originally thought. The Voidwalker seems like it is going to be much more of a viable option. So let's go ahead and start off by taking a look at the jumps that the Voidwalker will have. As with every class, they're going to have three jumps. So the first one is called Strafe Glide. This is essentially better control from Destiny 1. Then you have Blink. And the third jump is called the Burst Glide, which is Focus Burst from Destiny 1 as well. So essentially, we have the three same jumps that we had within the Voidwalker subclass in Destiny 1. They just have a couple of different names. Then you also, of course, have the Healing and Empowering Rifts because it is a Warlock subclass and every subclass for Warlocks will get those rifts. And then the three grenades, as in Destiny 1, are the Vortex, the Axiom Bolt, and the Scatter Grenade. So that's all pretty standard. Now the very, very interesting part comes from the two attunement paths that you can take. So the first path is called the Attunement of Chaos, and it features four different perks. So the first perk is called the Chaos Accelerant, and it allows you to hold L1 or your left bumper to draw power from the super to overcharge grenades. And what this does is make your grenade deadlier and more effective. So this essentially just makes it so your grenade does more damage to enemies and might have a couple extra projectiles or something if it's an Axiom Bolt or a Scatter Grenade. But other than that, it just all around makes your grenade better. Then you move on to the second perk, Bloom. Void abilities make enemies explode. So essentially, whenever you kill an enemy with your super, your grenade, or your melee, they can explode and damage nearby enemies. The third perk in this attunement is called Cataclysm. Nova Bomb now tracks enemies, shatters into seeking projectiles, and you can fire your weapon to detonate the Nova Bomb early. This is the perk that we saw active in the IGN gameplay that made the Nova Bomb gigantic, but also move very, very slowly. Now, this seems really cool at first, however, I feel like this is going to cause a lot of mistakes. So imagine that you're just running around a map and you accidentally stumble upon four enemies in a room and your first initial reaction is just to go ahead and use your super just because, you know, it's a panic super. It's what it does. However, right after you cast your Nova Bomb, you're going to start shooting to try to damage any of the leftover enemies. And this might cause your Nova Bomb to explode in your face. It does move very slowly. I'm not sure what the blast radius is. I'm not sure if you can hurt yourself with this one. It just seems like you're going to have to kind of train yourself to use the Cataclysm perk. And then finally, the fourth perk for the Chaos Attunement is the Entropic perk. Whenever you melee enemies, you charge your grenades, which is pretty cool. That's a pretty standard one for the Voidwalker. Now, the second set is actually my favorite set of perks. It's called the Attunement of Hunger. The first perk is called Feed the Void. You can press your left bumper to drain your grenade energy to heal yourself, and it also activates the Devour perk effect, which we will get into in a second. Now, this is very interesting. It essentially allows you to trade out your grenade energy for health. Now, I'm not really sure how fast this is going to act, but if you can just run around a corner and immediately have full health because you had a grenade charge ready to go, that might be a little bit overpowered. I guess it really just depends on how quickly you're able to activate this skill and how quickly your health regenerates after using it. The second perk in this attunement path is called Devoured. It allows you to kill an enemy with your melee to get fully healed and kills restore more health after this perk is activated. So essentially, you can activate this perk by killing an enemy. It activates the Devour perk. And then after the perk is activated and you get a kill by any other method, you also get some amount of health back. And remember, the Feed the Void perk actually activated the Devour effect as well whenever you use your grenade to heal yourself. The third perk is called Vortex. Nova Bomb makes a singularity that damages enemies trapped inside. That's a pretty easy one. That was in Destiny 1. And then finally, the last perk activate in this attunement path is going to be Insatiable. While the Devour perk is active, killing enemies extends it and recharges your grenade. So as you can see here, there's a lot of synergy within this path. You have the Devour perk, which allows you to kill enemies with a melee, and then whenever you kill more enemies, you get health back. Feed the Void also activates this perk whenever you use your grenade to heal yourself. And then Insatiable makes it so whenever that is active, killing enemies actually makes that perk last longer and recharges your grenade, which then you can use to heal yourself and activate the Devour perk once again. So as you can see, there's a lot of training perks here, which is very, very cool. I have a very strong feeling that the Atuma Hunger is going to be the go-to PvP class for Voidwalkers. 
It seems like it'll take a lot more skill to effectively use, but if you can, it is a high risk, high reward type of subclass, which is always the favorite for people in PvP. So hope you guys did enjoy this video. If you did, make sure to leave a like rating and to share it with your friends. Down in the comment section, make sure you guys let me know if you like the Attunement of Chaos or the Attunement of Hunger better and why. If you are interested in watching either of the two videos on screen, make sure to click their respective annotations to be taken to them. If you are brand new to my channel, make sure to hit the giant version of my logo to help us hit 10,000 subscribers and to be subscribed for more awesome Destiny 2 videos and live streams. Thank you guys so much for watching today, and I will see you in my next video.